It would have been impossible for me to finish the series focusing on the Middle Ages without at least mentioning Hagia Sophia, which is the cathedral, the patriarchal cathedral of Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Now, when the Byzantine Empire fell in uh, 1453, it obviously became a mosque under the Ottomans, and then it was turned into a museum during the Turkish Republic, and then again since 2020 it was converted back into a mosque. The pearl of the Byzantine architecture, Hagia Sophia, I thought about drawing it or painting it uh, from the outside, but I think um, a painting of, of it using photographic references would be would not look necessarily good or appealing. So I decided to do something that is completely out of my comfort zone, something that I've never tried before, which is painting interiors. And that's something that requires um, a lot of understanding of how light works, uh, the different wavelengths of light that are filtered by windows. Is it the red end or the blue end? And it is actually blue light, mostly blue light that comes through the windows. And I highly recommend for this reading James Gurney's book, uh, Color and Light. I downloaded it from archive.org, which is the an internet archive. You can find a lot of books. And that is, I think, in my opinion, the best reference, the best book that you can find explaining how to paint uh, plain air, to paint interiors, to use colors and light based on optics and, and physics and, uh, let's say, hard sciences. So this was quite a challenge for me, and you're gonna see that I actually did a lot of corrections on the way. It is a time-lapse video. Um, but in the end, I decided to simplify things by painting everything and then coming with a final layer of blue to suggest shadow. So it is basically a glazing over everything that I've already painted, the details, um, the things that uh, disappear into the background. Another mention that I would like to make, which is really important, the technique that I used in this composition is dry brushing. Dry brushing, as you probably know and already heard of, is using more pigment and less water. And I'm going to take this paper where I did some drills to demonstrate. For dry brushing, I think it doesn't really matter whether you're using um, natural hairs or synthetic hairs in a brush. It works just as fine. Generally, natural hairs are a lot better and are way preferable in watercolor painting compared to the synthetics. And the reason is that uh, natural hairs, they can take in a lot of water and a lot of pigment at once. So I'm gonna just try to take some pigment. I'm gonna use this, uh, I think it's called Sky Blue. This is a color palette from Nevska Palitra. They're Russian, made in St. Petersburg, and I find them to be my favorites, both in terms of affordability and also in terms of the quality of the pigments. In dry brushing, you, you should try to see how it works best for you. First, try it on a piece of paper to see how you can better control the paper, the, the brush. But it's basically using uh, the brush as horizontally as possible and using the sides of it and trying to create the strokes that you want in order to achieve the texture and the effects desired. And it's, it's, really, it's really amazing as a technique. You can suggest rust on metals. You can suggest um, maybe uh, an old wall with the paint being removed uh, and uh, create interesting effects in sand or textures in grass. So this is a very useful technique. Now, I used maybe 90% of this composition is using the dry brush, so it's a little bit too much, but uh, hopefully you will enjoy this video and hopefully it will be helpful in some ways and motivate you to try the same. See you soon. Bye.